our Lord, by the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let your word come to us, that at the end your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. So let me start with appreciation. Uh, I would want to thank my big brother, Pastor Ampon and Eddie Joyce, for the opportunity and the blessings they've given me for the days that have been here. I'm very, very grateful. I am eternally grateful. Amen. I also want to thank the area superintendent, uh, this apostolic church. Uh, to enter any area, you must be given apostolic permission. And so I want to thank our area superintendent for the opportunity to be here and to speak to God's people through his word. I also want to thank Sister Bernice and uh, the Sister Jessica and that family for hosting me. Matisse, my fine papa, 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 papa. And they've taken good care of me. I'm very, very grateful. I'm grateful to them. And I want to thank the Virginia Presbytery for such an honor. And the grace to be here and accepted to minister to us. And every member of this church, the kind of gift you have given me, I don't even have bags to carry them. Uh, I'm very grateful. On behalf of my wife and my children, I want to say thank you so much for everything. God bless you so much. Amen. But as I'm living today, just like before, every minister or king leaves his people, he has a word on his heart that he delivers to them. And so what I want to deliver this morning is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. So I'm talking about remember so you don't forget. Remember so you don't forget. That's the topic for my sermon. Remember so you don't forget. And I'm reading from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. It says, but remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirmed the commands the covenant which he swore to your ancestors at his is today. Amen. See, God has promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 that his descendants will go into a strange land for 400 years. And after the 400 years, he, God, will come and take them and bring them to the land of Canaan. As I mentioned the last time, when Moses delivered them and they were on their way to the promised land, out of disobedience to God, all of them died in the wilderness except Joshua and Caleb. But whilst they were in Egypt, God gave some promises. He gave them some commandments. He gave them some blessings. And they have all died. So those who were actually going to inherit the land are their children and their grandchildren who were not there when God gave the commandments and the blessings. So, they don't know what God has said, but they are going to possess the land. So, in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses repeated all the commandments and the blessings and the covenants to their children and their grandchildren who were now going to take over the land. Are, are you following me? Because they don't know what God has said. So, what were they going to do on the promised land? And as part of the commandments that Moses was repeating is what we are reading in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Then he tells them, you should remember the Lord your God. Tell somebody, remember. He said, remember the Lord your God. For it is he God who gives you the ability to get what you get. In other words, it's not your qualification. It's not because you have done something good. It's not because you come from a better because, but it is the Lord who gives it. But you see, human being by our nature, we are forgetful. By our nature as human beings, we forget. Unfortunately, we forget the good things, but we remember the bad. Three of us. Somebody can do something good to you, you forget. But somebody who did something bad to you 30 years ago, you still remember. It is human nature. That's why we must be born again. So, human nature forgets. 
So in Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2, the psalmist says that, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that's within me, bless his holy day. He says that, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. If you don't remember, you will surely forget. So Moses was trying to tell her, don't forget the Lord your God. To remember that it is he, God, who gave you the ability from January to December to go to work and come. Because if you are not careful, you assume that because you know how to drive, that's why you went in safety and came. So you say, no, it's not your driving skill. It is the Lord. If you are not careful, you think that because you know how to take care of yourself, that is why you sleep and you wake up. But you can go to the mortuary and people have slept and they didn't wake up. Moses said that, remember the Lord, for it is he. It's not you. Tell somebody, remember. So today, in a few minutes left, I want to share four things you should do when you remember. I don't like giving plenty things. Because when you give plenty, you can forget. So I want to make it simple so that you can remember. So I'm sharing four things that you must do when you remember. The first thing you should do when you remember is to be appreciative or thankful. When you remember, be appreciative, be thankful. Yes. Luke chapter 17 from 11 to 18, we read about the 10 leprous men who were leprous. They were lepers. And the Bible says that they, they were afar off and they saw Jesus, and they shouted, Jesus, have mercy on us. They screamed, just like we have been crying on God from January. We have been shouting, Eradiji, Eradi, Eradi. you've been crying and been calling. And the Bible said that while they were shouting to Jesus to save them, Jesus told them to go and show themselves to the priest. Because by the custom of the Jews, it's only the priest that can determine whether you have been healed of leprosy or not. So he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And the scripture said, whilst they were going, they were cleansed. Then one of them, the Bible said, that's the person I want you to be this morning. He remembered that just a while ago, he was leprous. But while they were going, all of a sudden, he saw that he is clean. And the scripture said, he turned back. He did what? Moses says, remember. If you remember, you will come back. A lot of people have been shouting, God, my work, my work. Since they were promoted, you can't even find them in the church. They have forgotten. Can I hear an amen? Some people were crying for marriage. They were calling on God. They were in prayer meeting. Since they got married, you can't even see them. And they said, my warrior no, into me Tell somebody, remember. they were going, they were clean. So one of them, when he saw that he had been clean, the Bible said he turned back. And he came shouting. He didn't come in gentility. He, the Bible said he was shouting. Oh, hey, hey, hey is that me? I, I am clean. I, and the Bible said he came to kneel before Jesus and thank him. Because he remembered that it is God. Can I hear an amen? He remembered. Then Jesus asked, ah, were not 10 people that were cleansed? Was there no fun any of them who will come and give thanks to God? Any of them who will remember? Any of them who will come and appreciate God for what he has done except this foreigner? Now, let me show you. Leprosy is always both on your skin and in your, inside of you. So when the scripture said they were cleansed, the one on their body was not there. Then he came. So that presented and Jesus told him, your faith has made you whole. Say the word whole. You can say it like a gun, whole. In other words, he got healing from both outside and inside because he came to show appreciation. Jesus says, remember, Moses was trying to tell the Israelites that if you fail to remember, your blessing will not be full. If you fail to remember, you may carry a half blessing. You think it is enough. But when you appreciate, you get the double. 
you get the full blessing. Tell somebody, remember, 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 remember. You know that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says that be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication, let your request be known unto God. Is that not so? So, it says by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Say with thanksgiving. Say that again. So, you see, thanksgiving is like the last digit of your phone number. When you don't dial that number, when you call, you tell the number you have dialed is incorrect. True or false? Am I preaching? If you dial all the numbers and you leave the last one, you may have dialed nine. You just left only one. When you dial, and even though you have nine, they will tell you the number you have dialed is incorrect. Your life can never be complete without thanksgiving. Cannot be. So, supplication with thanksgiving. Show appreciation. Let God know that what you did for me yesterday, I appreciate. In other words, you have been good to me in 2023, so I can trust you for 2024. When you show appreciation, you can be made whole. Moses says, remember. Because if you don't remember, you forget. Amen? The second thing I want you to do when you remember is to be humble. See, when you remember where you came from, when you remember the fact that many people died in 2020 out of COVID, some of them were doc seasoned doctors. Some of them had machines that could save them. But they died. And you are alive. And you think it's because you did something good, that's why you are alive. Moses said, no, remember. Can I hear amen? In fact, when one day when I heard that the minister for health had died, I was shocked. You know, Minister for Health? All the doctors are under him. He can call any doctor at any time. He can call 100 doctors to come to and take care of him. In one day, they won't appear because he's the Minister for Health. He woke up one day, he has died. When you wake up and you are alive, Moses says, Remember. So when you remember, you can only be humble. You realize that you are nothing. Except God who has taken off, you are virtually nothing. It is the grace that has kept you. You can only be humble. So, human beings are very proud people. You are human so. Because we think we have done, we have gotten something. But Moses said, no, 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 no. It's not you. Children of Israel, that you are going to possess the land. When you get there, be humble. Know that it is God who has given you what you have. Not of yourself. It is him. So, be humble. Tell somebody, be humble. Be humble. When you go to the American embassy in Ghana and you see the number of people there, some of them, they are, they are level in society that they don't have what it takes to come here. When you appear here, you can only be humble. Can I tell you? When you remember that people have paid different bribes to be here, they have not come. Some have sold all their properties to be here, they couldn't come. And you have come. And brother, be humble. I, I, I grew up in a very poor home. Very poor home. And I remember in those days when I'm going to school, there's no money for food. And so, you eat in the house, then you go to school. When you come, then you come and eat. I don't know how many of you had that experience. We are dead about when they say. And sometimes when we are going to school, the food my mother is cooking is the last one. Asan. And so whilst we are in school and we are learning, whilst others are eating their chocolate and the things, you are thinking like can't share minimally. You are thinking, when I get home, what am I going to eat? That's where we have come from. And today, I can be where I am. Church, 
Moses said that when you remember these ones, you can only be humble. You, you can only be humble. You can only, because it is not you. In fact, I went to school with people whose children were very rich at the time. Today, when they see me, they oh, so full. Vampire mind. I look at them. What their parents were, and what they are today, and what I was, and what I am today. I can only be humble. I can only be humble. I can only be humble. Maybe let's read, let's read the same chap, chapter of Deuteronomy. And I'll read from verse 10. What Moses told them. From verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 8. He said that when you have eaten and are full, satisfied, then thou shalt bless the Lord your God for the land which he had given thee. Next verse. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgment and his status which he command thee this day. Next verse. Lest when thou hast eaten and are full and hast built godly houses and dwell therein. And when the herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy hand be lifted up, thy heart, thy heart lifted up. And thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Yes. So he's saying that you people should be very careful. Be humble. When you remember that it is God who brought you out of Egypt, be humble. Because there is a tendency for man to forget. And when you forget, you'll be proud. You think now, oh, me and me, and, I mean, of course, I, I qualify. I, I had master's degree. I had first degree. I had this. I mean, I come from this home. That is why I have become what I've got. Moses said, no, 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 no. Be humble. Because if you know that it was God who brought you out of slavery in Egypt, and out of nothing, he decided to give you the grace, and your fathers died, and you are going to possess the land. When you hear that one, you can only be humble. Remember and be humble. Maybe you want an example. Remember Nebuchadnezzar. Bible says that God raised him up as a king. In his days, he was the greatest king. When Nebuchadnezzar speaks, it is as good as done. In fact, he was equal to God in some sense. Because when he speaks on earth, nobody can challenge him. That is why he can say that he's put people in fire and he can put them. Then one day, he thought that he had become like God. He didn't humble. He didn't remember. He forgot himself. He thought he was God. He began to challenge God Almighty. And the Bible said, God reduced him to an beast. And he went into the forest for seven years. And listen, the Bible said, when he came to himself, in other words, when he remembered, then he said, The Lord, He is God. He humbled himself. Because when you remember, you cannot be proud. Let somebody remember, oh, remember, remember. Please remember. Remember. The next thing you should do when you remember is to be hopeful. See, the account says, calls God, because I'm a guy, when I hear account words, I, I try to understand it. It means that he has done it before. And because he has done it before, you can trust in him. Are you following me? In Psalm 81 verse 10, the Bible says that I am the Lord thy God which brought you out of the land of Egypt. So, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. In other words, I had the power to deliver you from Pharaoh. So, any other thing on earth, I can give it to you. So, when you remember what has God, God has done before, you can be hopeful that he can do it again. If you remember what he has done from January to December now, you can be hopeful that 2024, he will take care of you. That's what we're talking about. When you remember, you'll be hopeful. That which makes people hang themselves is when they lose hope. Because, you know, in life, you turn left, you turn right, you turn back, you look forward. The person looks at his life. He turns left. There's nothing that shows that there's hope. Right, there's nothing. He turns back. He looks forward. There's no, so, after turning around and there's no hope, the next thing is to kill yourself. But the psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? See, my help cometh from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. So, when you turn left, right, forward, back, and there's nothing, 
and you look up, you can be hopeful. Moses is telling them that if God was able to deliver us from Egypt under the hands of Pharaoh, then that God can take us to the promised land and take care of us. Remember when God, they got to the promised land and they were sharing the land. Twelve tribes. They gave everybody. When we got to the children of Levi, God says, they shouldn't be giving you land. He said, I will be your portion. Hey! Same way, I can't hear. Everybody has been given a property to take care of themselves. When they got to the other, God says, no, I am your portion. And if I was there, I don't know how I would feel. Hey, these people are with you. They are farming. They are getting property. And we are getting nothing. And God says, I am your portion. Hey, if you think about it, you lose hope. Like, no. And they will you. But when you look back and you remember what you were in Egypt, the slavery, what God did to deliver you from Pharaoh. When you remember that one, then you can believe God when he says, he's your portion. Moses says, remember. When you remember, you'll be hopeful. So he told them that, I am your portion. And they believed him. Because they remembered where they have come from. And look at what God did. Then God instructed 11 tribes to all, at the end of the year, pay ten, a tenth of all their products to the children of Levi. So they got more than every tribe. This God is a faithful God. So we can trust him. In Psalm 60 verse 7, David said that, I have said the Lord always before me. And because he's at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. When you put yourself on your right hand, you can be shaken. But when God is concerned, Moses, when you remember that it is he who brought you out of the land of it, you can be hopeful that he can do it again. So 1 verse 5, the Bible says that blessed is a man who has the God of Jacob for his help. You know, you know the God of Jacob? The God of Jacob. The God who can pick you from the pit and make you a prime minister in a strange land. That's the God we are talking about. The God who can pick somebody who is nothing and within one day make him something. The God who can cause enemies to bring all the food from their country to the world front and make them run away and leave the food for the people of Samaria. That's the God we are talking about. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we can think or ask. When you remember, you can be hopeful. I don't know if you have lost hope because of what you have gone through in 2023, but I can assure you by the word of the Lord that this God who has brought you life after now, 2024, he can take care of you. Did you say Amen. The last thing I want you to remember, when you remember, you should do, is to be lawyer. When you remember, be lawyer. You see, you can only be committed to something that you believe. Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter sixteen and verse nine. I should be ending in the next two minutes. It says, "For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth." To show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart are loyal. Okay, this one says perfect. Can I have New King James? The word loyal is what I'm looking for. You have New King James? Okay. So in the New King James, those whose hearts are loyal to him. Let me hear you say loyal. Yes. You see, this king went to many wars and he won because he relied on the Lord. He trusted in God. The way he was going to fight this battle, he went by himself. He has forgotten that it was God who was winning the battles for him. So he thought that all this while, it was his skill, it was his ability that was making him win the wars, not knowing it was God. So he didn't ask God for this battle. When he went, he lost. And whilst he has lost and he was complaining, God sent the prophet to come and tell him, that what you did was foolish. You thought you could do it. But you didn't remember that in the battles that were passed, it was God who won them for you. And he told him that the eyes of the Lord is moving through and through throughout the earth 
to show himself strong on those whose hearts are loyal to him. When you remember what God has done, you must be loyal to him. You must be committed to him. Some people, they, they come to church the last Sunday, the last Sunday of the year, and 31st was night, and they go. Unless the next 31st, they are not coming again. He don't remember. I pray that you remember. You remember that it is God who has brought you where he has brought you. And when you remember, you will be thankful. When you remember, you will be humble. When you remember, you can be hopeful. When you remember, you will be loyal to this God. Rise to your feet. In our world today, many people are finding it difficult to trust God at certain times in their lives because they have forgotten. But I don't want you to forget this morning what God has done. See, when you listen to your pocket, you won't remember. Remember, you were expecting some amount of money in your account and it is not reflecting. So you think that God has not been good. If you can go to the mortuary and come back the next day, you know that you can remember God has been good. But I can't say that who won't come and I what. When you have life, you have everything. The God who has given you life, he is able to make other things follow. But if you only you remember that it is he who gives you the ability to get what you get. Begin to thank him. Just thank him. Thank him. Father, we thank, thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are grateful, God, for your great grace and mercy. Father, when we remember the things that you have done for us, Lord, we are thankful in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are grateful in the name of Jesus. Moses said, remember the Lord your God. We should remember what you have done. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. For it is here, God. going out and coming in. We are so grateful. Of the living God, we are grateful. Lord, we are thankful in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God Almighty. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we are thankful, oh God. We are thankful in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we are thankful in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We are so thankful. Remembering what you have done in our life. In Jesus. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never, I will never go back. Anymore when I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. Forgotten, I want you to talk to the Lord. I remember, I remember where you are brought. I remember, I remember, and so I am thankful. I remember, so I am humble. I remember, so I, 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 I am hopeful. I remember, so I want to be loyal to you. I remember, lift up your voice and pray. Yes, Lord, talk to him. Of Jesus. I will never the Lord. We thank you. Go this back. Moment. And Lord, we remember where you took us yes, Lord. and how far you remember have brought us. Remember where you were. Remember where I was. Remember, 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 remember the place where you were in years ago. When you were in that village. The family that I came from. When you were on the street. The country that I came from. Remember where you were. The village that I came from. you were not. Where I was slipping. The child of God. The place I was And now where the Lord has brought you. To where you have brought me And now the Lord has done in your life. To where you have brought me. And you have Today, you can Lord, I remember those days. You can I remember those days, Lord. 
and I give glory to you. I give adoration to you, Lord. I am so thankful. I am humble. I am loyal. And I want to be loyal to you. Because I remember. I because I remember. I am trusting in the name of Jesus. For full Lord, I remember you. The process. Yes, Lord. The life. The struggle. So thankful today. I give glory to you. I give glory to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. I am trusting. Say, I am trusting. I am trusting, trusting, I am trusting, trusting only thee, hallelujah, I am trusting. Like I was saying, this year is our year of increase. Maybe you've not experienced increase in certain areas of your life. And if you are not careful, that aspect of your life would deny you the opportunity to acknowledge the areas that you have experienced increase. And you will be sad. And you may be thinking that what the Lord said, I did not experience it. Many other things the Lord has done. Many other things he has brought on your way. Many other doors he opened. Many other battles he fought for you. He fed you every day. He gave you breath each moment. The Lord has not forgotten you. He remembered you and he keeps remembering you. Do you know how much it costs God to keep you alive each second? Beloved, it is important to remember. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. As a church, we remember, Lord. As families will remember, and as individuals, as a nation, as creation, Lord, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing, and thank you for what you are yet to do. Thank you for who you are, for being our God, being the source of life. Oh. Thank you for your servant. Father, I lift up your servant. Are you sent to us to bring the word of the Lord? In Psalm 68, the psalmist says, The Lord spoke the word, and great is the company that publishes it. Your servant came to publish your word. In other words, to declare the mind of God. Now he is preparing to leave and go back to where, Lord, you brought him from. We pray your grace upon his life. We pray for traveling messes. We pray that God, the very word that he brought to us, may this same word water his life. May he also always remember May he always, oh God, be loyal and humble. And may he always know it is the Lord who has brought him this far. And may Lord, because he has obeyed you, may you satisfy him with good things and good life. May you, Lord, bless his home and his family. I pray the entire church unto you. Bless your church as you have already declared. Bless every single person. 
Bless every family. Bless us as a community, Lord. And may your grace abound. Few days left for us to draw the curtains for the year. But we know for you, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. So we know that, Lord, many are the things you would do in fulfillment of all your promises. Your children are looking up to you all times, all season, all days. Let your glory be seen in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, whilst you are standing, please, a minute. Uh, before we receive the benediction, I want to plead with you 